he gave ran for office. But the thing that I'm most proud of is when my dad had his first term as a mayor, and then after his first term, he got the bout with cancer. He got throat cancer, and he was a fighter. And he, those doctors, he had a they had to do surgery on him. He was in the hospital for over a month. That we, my mom, took excellent good care of him, and us kids did to help him to get home. And we, and what I was the most proud of was when he decided then that he was going to run again. So after that bout, because it's hard enough running for any office and to get up and do public speaking, but when you're not, when you're going to get up and you don't know if you're, you're going to have voice because the prosthesis isn't working or was working, he did it. And you know why he did it? Because he loved his family, number one, but he also loved the city of Joliet. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm so glad that you're interviewing me today because I was so proud of, I'm, I always will be proud of my father, but just what he did for the city of Joliet and if, um, and that's why I feel fortunate with my job here as a county clerk. You also have to take in consideration, you always have to do what's right and follow the law. And especially in this office, you have to do what's, you have to be fair to both sides of the aisle, even if you're Republican, Democrat, or no matter where you live, because this is a huge county. It's just not the city of Joliet. We have 24 other townships in Will County. So, but getting back to your dad, because we're trying to understand sort of the situation in the late 80s and 90s and how the mayor used his position, whether it was to bring in the riverboats. I mean, how did he help spark a turnaround? Well, um, he brought unions back into people back to work, and that's what he's known for. And he was how able. How did he do that? He working with the union people and working with our. Um, it, and my dad always says this. He didn't do it alone. He worked with the council and did it together as a group. He worked with the unions and whoever he could to get business back in here, get people working. Mm -hmm. And that he was fortunate that he got the riverboats in here, got money, the baseball diamonds. He was always proud of that baseball diamond, um, the splash station. And he also was proud of our um, getting more handicap accessible parks in our Joliet area. Mm -hmm. He always took care of his the veterans, you know, um, um, uh, the, coming over Jefferson Street Bridge, how you see that beautiful monument of the flags. He did that, worked with the museum. I mean, we got the Rialto. There's so many things that uh, help, but you know, it all takes money too. So he was fortunate at the time when the uh, riverboats were doing well at the time. Remember the riverboats where they used to be out, even actually go out on the... Um, do, you, do you remember much about the decision to apply for the riverboat licenses because that's what we were thinking that that was one of the things that your dad really did that helped that he was sort of I don't know if he did it or if, if it was more like a joint work with the he council. worked with the uh, city managers too you have to they work closely my dad worked closely with the city managers their attorneys that they had at the time and the council and they had a good group they they worked as a team at you know and so I think that's what helped the city and it was um something that he just made happen, you know, and people had respect for him. I always said that my dad was liked by all walks of life. He could talk to a homeless person and he could talk to the President of the United States. Mm -hmm. So I think he had a gift, you know, about him that mm -hmm. it just, he was lucky he had that, so. Do, do you remember at the time, was there a sense that the riverboats um, were going to be so influential in helping to kind of help the city turn the corner? I think so. I think I don't think they would have brought it in if they didn't think it was. But now there's more out there. Mm -hmm. at, the, at the time when it was in Joliet, they did well because people were coming from all over. And um, now that you see that there's more at different locations, it's harder for it's harder for people now. Mm -hmm. People have money, don't have money, then they're certainly not going to go gambling. But I think from what I understand from, you know, talking to people and looking at that era, it was that the riverboat sort of gave a really necessary infusion of cash, sort of at just the right moment that then helped spur other good things, right. like development coming in and, you know, building and the west. And keeping up with our neighborhood, and apply for grants is important too, because if you apply for grants, and all the neighborhood development, our sewers, remember back then? I remember those years way back when people were having trouble with their flooding in their basements. Oh, tell me more about yeah. that. Yeah. Was that like the 70s? That was, yeah, 70s and 80s. And people would always have, if it rained or something, the people would have trouble with flooding. And then they had used their grant money and some of the funding for the riverboats. 
they did the um, neighborhood watch with neighborhood development so they repaired all that repaired the streets Boy, talking with you is bringing back some memories but one thing that my dad always did he he really never brought his uh, he made his own decisions at the as, a, as mayor and even when he was a policeman He didn't bring all that his troubles home to us five kids when we were home and my mom mm -hmm. He kind of left it at work and because mm -hmm. there's a lot of things that we didn't know about mm -hmm. so um, yeah, yeah. Let me just do I'm just gonna just something sometimes, sometimes to shift the camera so if it's okay I'll just get I'm moving your furniture around This is really nice